contact, coming to your question, with an extraterrestrial intelligence which would be in this solar system. And, and that's clear. And the master, you found the reference. That's a great delineation. In the, in the yeah. master theorist, it's in you yeah. are responsible, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. And it words the effect of uh, we don't require um, help from outside this solar system. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not going to be dogmatic and say it's never happened or anything, but the, the source of communication with Earth is done through this solar system, as you would expect. These are our neighboring planets. We're part of the, as it were, the family of this sun. Mm. We're very privileged to mm. be so. Beautiful way to and put it's it. Yeah. And it's completely logical that these great intelligences, not necessarily physical as we know it, but within this solar system are the beings. So there you can discriminate very, very quickly, actually. Mm. Um, you know, why would they communicate from the Pleiades when they could communicate from Mars or Venus or Jupiter? The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. Richard. Darren. So I thought I'd uh, swing us back around to the UFO topic a bit this week, but also sure. continuing in this kind of theme that we've been exploring around mediumship and channeling. Right. Um, you know, because in all the the media coverage of of this UFO disclosure that's been going on, I, th I think there's still there's still a lot of open questions, obviously, that people have, and I think one of them that I think is is certainly prevalent that I've seen is um, <clears throat> the kind of the kind of false claims of ET contact and specifically relating to channeling, like people saying okay. that they are receiving messages from people yeah. from other planets. Now, it's not just something that's happened now, it's been going on for decades, but it's, yeah. it's really sort of like, there's a lot more people, it seems, claiming now, kind of in the last 10, 20 years or so, to be in contact with people from other planets, and particularly for people from other, you know, star systems, perhaps even other galaxies. Um, and the reason I think this is, you know, so important for us to discuss on the show is because we have here in the Nine Freedoms, probably the, you know, one of the most profound and important examples of genuine ET contact with yeah. Earth, yeah. Um, giving us, you know, unparalleled teachings, possibly the greatest that have ever been received, I think that has been said. Um, and, I, you know, I think these, a lot of these false claims take away from and distract from the essential message that we have been given. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wanted to, to talk to you about this today, particularly because of your experience with Dr. George King and your own experience of mediumship of channeling, of course. Sure. Um, to, just to kind of help people to kind of get a better understanding of, sure. of what is really involved in channeling and mediumship, yeah. mm -hmm. and also kind of to have a benchmark or a yardstick themselves. Mm -hmm. And possibly, you know, we've talked about on, the previous, on, a, on a previous show, kind of the credentials that people can kind of credentials evaluate, you yeah. know, like when they're looking at a specific medium or someone who claims to be in contact, particularly with extraterrestrials, like, okay, well, um, you know, well, we have kind of some criteria that we can go through, I think, mm. that will be helpful for people. Yes. Um, and then finally, you know, maybe some of the dangers, like why does this matter anyway? I mean, why yeah. are we even talking about it? Yeah. So maybe I can kick us off here just, you know, what do we, when we say that people are in, 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 when people claim to be in contact with extraterrestrial beings, I mean, what is, what are they claiming, do you think? I mean, certainly what are we claiming in our case, at least? Yeah. Well, this is a massive topic <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So, you know, I'm very happy to be, I didn't know what we were going to be talking about today, sure, sure. so you prepared it and I'm yeah, very happy yeah. to come along and try and answer the questions. Um, what I do know mm. is that as a medium or a person who channels, you do need training. Mm. Uh, you do need to be psychic as a starting point. That's only a starting point. Sure. But you also need to have concentration. Mm. So I know we're going to do some shows on psychic matters will, probably definitely. after yeah. this one. And one of the key things that marks out um, certainly the training in the Ethereum Society and, and everything that I do and in Unlock Your Psychic Powers and so on is this combination of psychic development with yoga practices, mm -hmm. and particularly spiritual, mental practices, not, yeah. not just the physical exercises. Mm. This gives you concentration. Without concentration, your channeling is almost useless, actually, because even the good bits get mixed up with the bad bits. And because you, you won't, tell. Yeah, and you yeah. won't know <clears throat> if you don't have good concentration. Mm. So you need some form of what I would call yogic training. And if you're getting into mediumship, Dr. King has spoken brilliantly about trance, and he calls it positive trance and negative trance. If you're using trance mediumship, where someone's speaking through you, yeah. 
I don't think it's going to work. This is even assuming you had a genuine contact, which right. we'll get on to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But as a methodology, I don't think it's going to work unless you're able to enter what he entered, which is samadhi. I've tried it myself decades ago, so, and, and probably shouldn't have done, but mm -hmm. I did. Found a loss of will and a loss of accuracy. Mm -hmm. Um, because I wasn't able to enter somatic trance. If you, if you aren't able to enter somatic trance, and very, very, very few people have, I've touched my toe in the ocean of samadhi, <laughs> um, but I haven't used it in mediumship. And that was only on one occasion. And that's after decades of practice and training uh, to, to get to that stage and, and karma yoga. And I think just to underscore that point, when we say samadhi trance, we mean entering into a state of samadhi. Samadhi is a trance state. Mm -hmm. And Dr. King was uh, very, I mean, it, it, there's a, what you might call a pe peculiar in the right sense, is a peculiarity. It's like a unique use, I think, mm. as far as I'm aware of that state. I'm not going to say no one's ever done it. Right. Um, you know, ascended masters, and I'm sure in one form or another, I'm sure it has been done. Other adepts we know have, have done it, whether, but whether they've, you know, used it for a voice to speak through their voice, I don't know of any cases using samadhi, especially not with the technicality of the description that Dr. King gives of the state he enters, namely raising the kundalini to a particular psychic center, allowing a beam of, of thought to rest upon that particular center, and then it's translated into sound through his brain. Mm -hmm. It's a very technical description. I've never seen it anywhere else. Yeah. Certainly in public, I don't think it has been demonstrated. And the beauty with Dr. King, you know how he got there. You know his 10 years of training. Again, I've never found anyone else, certainly in the West, who's even claimed to practice advanced forms of yoga for eight hours a day for 10 years on top of a job. Um, it's completely unique training, a completely unique state, a completely unique result. Um, other mediums won't like that. Right. They want to think, well, you can do it, I can do it, that's all, why not? No one's special, blah. Yeah. I'm sorry, people have certain abilities. You know, you only had one Mozart in the 18th century, yeah. and he said he was the greatest musician on earth. People didn't believe him, uh, and they didn't think he was, but he was. And he was musical. And, uh, and the other now. people yeah. who thought they were better than him, no one listens to anymore, mm, most exactly. of them. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> The, you know, and, and this, is, this is what Dr. King is, even more so in the field of mediumship. So I, I would just put him on a completely different level. Um, but one thing I know, there are, you know in prayer, yeah. just to get off of it, and you know this very well because you're an excellent prayer, one of our Thank best. You. And you know there's two things that, that a prayer director, for example, at, at the Mission Operation Prayer Power is, is looking for. Um, well, in training of prayers, you're looking for quality and you're looking for quantity mm -hmm. of hours, in other mm -hmm. words, the mm -hmm. intensity. And the two are linked, because yeah. the better the quality, the, the stronger the quantity. But you are looking for those two things. Now, I think, this is my opinion, in mediumship, you've got a similar principle. Yeah, okay. You're looking for the quality, which is the elevated uh, nature you're able to achieve, that would be the quality. Yeah. And the other thing you're looking for, rather, I won't really call it quantity, but it would be accuracy. Yes. So yeah. you would quality and accuracy yeah. in mediumship. You can have an accurate medium who hasn't got very high quality. They can accurately get your, your aunt, who shouldn't really be communicating with them at all. She should be moving on and mm. not worrying mm -hmm. about her niece's piano exam. Yeah. Which okay. is what you're getting <laughs> yeah. in some mediumship. Um, but that's happening, and, and happening accurately. Mm. Um, I've had accurate... When I first started out, basic contacts with relatives, absolutely proven, beyond all doubt, accurately delivered, but basic. Um, so you, you can have accuracy, but the quality is the other thing. Now, most people, in order to get contact coming to your question with an extraterrestrial intelligence, which would be in this solar system, and, and that's clear. And the master, you found the reference. That's a great delineation. In the, in the yeah. master theorist, it's in you yeah. are responsible, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. And it words the effect of uh, we don't require um, help from outside this solar system. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not going to be dogmatic and say it's never happened or anything, but the, the source of communication with Earth 
is done through this solar system, as you would expect. These are our neighbouring planets. We're part of the, as it were, the family of this sun. Mm. We're very privileged to mm. be so. Beautiful way to and put it's it. Yeah. And it's completely logical that these great intelligences, not necessarily physical as we know it, but within this solar system are the beings. So there you can discriminate very, very quickly, actually. Mm. Um, you know, why would they communicate from the Pleiades when they could communicate from Mars or Venus or Jupiter? Um, and th there you'll, you have a very easy way of discriminating quite quickly. Immediately. That's, that's, yeah. that's one immediate criteria, isn't it? Because there are, yeah. I mean, I think there are a few, but there are very, very, very much fewer people who would claim contact with beings in the solar system. I don't know of them. Uh, there may be some. Yeah. It seems few and far between. I think there's a good reason for that, because for many years people ruled out life in this solar system. Mm. And so the, these mediums didn't want to attach themselves to it. But if they talked about Sirius, or especially some unknown constellation, right. who can check it out? Yeah. I think, I, I think we've, we've talked a little bit before how, um, you know, whereas Dr. King distinguishes himself immediately in the very, very early days mm. as someone who is in contact with beings on higher realms of other planets in the solar system, yeah. even when the vast, you know, vast majority of people would have said that that's impossible, that there could be life there. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> whereas, you know, other people, false claimants would be trying to make it seem believable, you know, he wasn't concerned with that. Yeah. He was only concerned with the truth, which is that yeah. his contacts were with mm. people on higher realms of these planets in our solar system. Yeah. So if you're not a somatic medium, mm. then in my lingo, this is just me, you're a psychic medium. Okay. That's what I sort of call myself. Yeah. Um, and some, Alice Bailey, for example, didn't like the word medium, but that's too bad, you know, again, yeah. due respect. But, yeah. it, you know, it's just a word. Sure. I understand why she didn't, and, and I understand why Madame Blavatsky didn't like seances. I don't mm. like seances mm. as a thing, because they're so uncontrolled and generally basic. It should be a controlled yogic, as the word I would use. Sure, yeah. Certainly mystical practice. Yeah. Coming back to our two, um, qual uh, you know, our two elements, the quality yeah. and the accuracy. accuracy. Mm. I myself, I was set up doing readings, psychic readings, by Dr. George King personally. As a matter of fact, the first thing he did when he set me up was tell me off. <laughs> because um, without going into the whole story, I was in New York with him and Ray Nielsen, and we, we had a task to do there. We were in a restaurant. Um, you, we, there were no tables which could seat three people or four people, so we had to sit on tables of two. Okay. So he and Ray sat on the table. I sat on another table. There was a woman there mm. on the table I was on who was very upset, and I was talking to her while I had my lunch. Really? And she was on the same this table? This is in 1980, yes. Okay. Yeah. And she kind of opened up to me, and I, I was then developing, mm. but I hadn't told Dr. King. I actually had given a reading to Monic King oh, yeah. with a okay. crystal ball, and she encouraged me a lot, but I hadn't told Dr. King. Mm. Anyway, I was giving this chat with this woman, and I started yeah. giving her a reading. I don't encourage that, by the way. Mm. I was learning. I don't think you should foist your psychic opinions on anyone mm. unless they ask you to. Mm. Or the least you should do is offer them, and then if they say yes, okay, and if they say no, fine. Nice tip. But don't, yeah. don't just you. intrude. Mm. But anyway, this woman wanted to know. I gave her this reading, and it was going on a bit. And uh, uh, Dr. King and Ray came over, and Dr. King, they'd finished their lunch. And he said, well, come on, we're going, he said to me. This woman stood up and said to Dr. King, this man here has just given me a fantastic reading. He's an amazing person. <laughs> and the master said, really? <laughs> I called him the master and said, OK, madam, you know, he's always polite, the master, as I call him, Dr. George King. Mm. And then we left. I wasn't yet as close to Dr. King as I later became, although sure. I was already a secretary of the Ethereum Society in London sure. and I worked with him every day and spoke to him every day. First thing he did was tell me off. Well, for not telling him. For not him telling him. He said, oh, you okay. should have told me. He's right, I should have told mm. him. I didn't tell him. Mm. And... Um, the second thing he did was set me up doing it properly through the society, I and he, he gave me a, I was using a crystal ball, he gave me a better one and he, himself, and he designed the thing, and so he got me going. Mm -hmm. Now, b b long story short, when I started, I was getting help from various people, I think some of them who'd been earlier connected to him, such as Sir James Young Simpson, I think, mm -hmm. because he was setting me up doing this, and this was done formally through the, through the society. I see. And we, I was doing it in America as well when I went there for staff as well as members. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of readings. Um, but 
I had two particular guides that helped me. One was called Haridasa, and I think the other was called Brahmananda, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Either Brahmananda or Brahmacharya, but anyway, those are the two. And they helped me a lot, and they helped me when I gave readings. After he initiated me, and this is all to illustrate a point, uh, and gave me a particular consecration as a bishop, yeah. only after that, I was able to contact the person I was really meant to be getting messages from, which was their teacher, who was a particular, very prominent Lama from Tibet on the other realms. And this is just an example of the quality. So that only then, and even then, one of either Haridasa or Brahmanan had to come to me and say, so and so, he, had a, he has a well known name, will contact you tomorrow at 3 p.m. It was all arranged, and very often it would be arranged just after a serp, like a commemoration service or something I'd taken. Okay. So the, the, the quality, the bishop, this yeah. is all yeah. about me being in a certain state I see. where I could gain a rapport with him. Formally, but prior to that, I'd had to work through his, as it were, his disciples. Sure, I see. And then it yeah. moved on. And I there's see. a lot of, I won't go into the stories to do that, which are mm. really quite amazing. Mm. But he then helped me for many years in, and, and gave a lot of very helpful advice, which, which was useful in various ways. But that's the quality point. And then as you progress, and then um, some years ago, I had a health problem. And I uh, luckily w was treated very well and mm. I got better, but I was told I had to no longer take messages from a particular realm, uh, below a certain realm, and I could only take it from certain higher realms and nothing below. So this is guidance and trying to get your quality up, rather like you might say in coming back to prayer, you're moving from A, in the old days mm. we had B mm. to A+, plus. now people have to walk in and get double A+, plus mm. predominantly, it's more demanding, but then it's more sensitised, they're walking into an environment where their energy is being invoked more. Right. So, but you move up the notches and you'll know, you know, you can get a, a very good double A plus prayer, but you can get a much, much better double A plus prayer as you develop. Right. And, you know, who knows, some people might be going beyond that, but we don't assess beyond that um, at moments, maybe. Mm. Um, so this it, it's a progression. And then, of course, as you go up, you're able, then only after that I was able to get, for example, Francis Bacon and, uh, and Dante. Yeah, I think what that illustrates for me is that, you know, there's like a, there's like a track record and there's a sort of like traction even, you're, you're making you're making progress, not just that you fell off a log one day and suddenly you're in contact with yeah. someone in the higher realms. Yeah. You or know. you go straight to a, you know, and that's, these even say Bacon, Dante, and I even have, we've talked about Blavatsky, right. or I think yeah. it's on a very high realm, but she's not ascended. If I, I remember having a, a dinner conversation with Dr. King uh, on her, the anniversary of her death, just the two of us were having mm. dinner in LA, and a book had been written about her, another horrible book, denouncing her, there's plenty oh, yeah. of those. She, okay. she certainly went through terrible allegations and, and disgusting rumours. She said rumors. That the message, actually, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Even, even, yeah she did. Even, even within her own movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the calling cards. If you've never had attacks of any kind, then you, you're not really getting anywhere, <laughs> yeah, okay. I would say, yeah, okay, yeah. of one kind or another. might yeah. even be within your family. Mm -hmm. could come from anywhere, but you, know, you, you will get that if you're really making progress. Um, and if you and you might get it psychically even, um, but you have to be. That's another topic, I think. But you have to be careful. But you might you, if you're doing something really good. But I was telling. We were talking about this book that had come out, and he actually stood up from the table, and he was incensed, mm. and he was walking around the dining room, and kind of wagging his finger. But I remember him saying to me, she's in the Great White Brotherhood now. Mm. Like, they can like it or lump it, but she's in the Great White right, Brotherhood now. Right, right. Now, he didn't mean by that ascended, because that can be used to mean ascended, but it can also mean to you to, to mean connected to, which she was in her lifetime, actually. Even, she was a yes, disciple of, yeah. of ascended masters. Yeah. It doesn't mean white-skinned, by the way, and it doesn't mean men. It's just an old-fashioned term, Great White Brotherhood. Um, most of them aren't white-skinned, as a matter of fact, yeah, and some of true. them are, are, are women. True. Um, but, so that's on the list. So she isn't ascended. Um, but to move beyond that now, well, to go back to your original question, ET contacts, to gain an ET contact reliably, 
I mean, you might have a, 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 an experience of a sighting and you might get a particular telepathic feeling at a particular mm, moment and sure. even get some kind of message. I mean, it's said that Ezekiel did, isn't it? It's said that, and I believe it. I fully believe it. He was a prophet who was commissioned by a UFO. Mm. He was a UFO prophet. And he, and he spent his time thereafter carrying out instruction he'd received from an extraterrestrial intelligence who came down in a UFO. I fully believe that. Oh, it's a nice, nice topic. Just for throwing show. that in. <laughs> yeah, just throwing nice that topic. in. Um, and funnily enough, one of the people over in the Congress over there has said not quite that, but something very similar about yes. Ezekiel. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, a, you know, there's so many great cases through history. This isn't new. But that's a different thing from being a channel where you're receiving accurately messages from a cosmic intelligence. Because there you would have to have, um, first of all, a great elevation yourself. I mean, if you think about mm. it, you're in rapport. So at that moment, you've got to be on a similar level to the person who's communicating. Yeah. You might not be most of the day and most of your life, but at that, you have to be able to induce that state yeah. where you're in rapport for them to use you in some way. Mm -hmm. And most people just can't do that if they think they can. They don't even know they need to. Yeah. You just look, and if they don't know they need to, they don't, they, they can't they do themselves it. Out you, they've the ruled themselves out. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, most of it is nonsense. Mm. I, 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 you know, it doesn't mean they are nonsense people or they're liars necessarily. Uh, they, they probably believe it and they might be doing good things. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, so we do have to separate that. It's, it's, it's yeah. a difficult one. I yeah. mean, you know, there are people who thought they were hearing from the Virgin Mary who weren't. I talked to Dr. King about this because of their Catholic upbringing. But, yes, it could okay. be a guide. It could be a, someone who's passed on who was a, a nun and wears, you know, something that looks to them a bit like the Virgin Mary and they don't think it's sister so-and-so. They think, sure. and, and it's a difficult problem. Do you then, does the guide then drop their person because they've got their identity wrong? Mm. Or do they carry on, at least they're giving healing? Yes, at least something so It's good a complex business. I've got a lot, mm. a lot of sympathy for guides. One time I was going to write a book called A Good Guide Guide. Yeah, yeah, he, he wrote it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can totally appreciate that. And also, um, you know, coming back to your point about this elevated state, it's mm. like, um, it's, and it's not a vague thing at all, is it? I mean, we're talking about no, raising just, Kundalini in full to a very right. high center. I mean, yeah. that, you know that's happening, yeah. if that's happening, and you've done, yeah. you've practiced 10 years for eight hours a day like Dr. King. Yeah, did exactly. Yeah, yeah, another thing I, I, in my limited experience that I have found when I was told about 10 years ago I've got to move up a notch, mm. and it was all around, around the time I had an illness too. It's interesting. That can happen to people. Mm. By the way, people, if you've got an illness... Sometimes it can be a, a, a moment of breakthrough. It, it can be a thing that you're going through a change that you have, the soul have agreed, to, you know, decided to take on some of your own karma. Mm. You know, I'm not going to say anything else. It is your karma, but it can also lead. I've met a number of people who found spirituality through either a physical or mental health illness, which they then recover from and then they change their life, which is what was required. Not, you know, I bet you there's people this will resonate with who are watching this right now. So you know, on a higher level, that can happen. But that, that's an aside. But sure. I did find, though, when I started to go try and go higher, um, and there was a block on, on those people communicating with me who were lower. So, you know, you have, there is some control over, yeah. over who you, you're allowed to hear from. Um, it was also kind of more difficult to concentrate in a way. Because it was so as beautiful you go higher, as yeah. you go higher. Mm -hmm. This is just my limited experience. And that's, on, that's not ETs, that's yeah. people in other realms. Yeah. Because it's such a beautiful energy mm -hmm. that you almost want to drift off and just, just enjoy it and go into a sort of semi-blissful, peaceful condition around it. I see. And you're not there to Rather do, than that. do that. Yeah, yeah. You, you've okay. got to concentrate and get the words, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, and so I think that that illustrates kind of like broadly a benchmark of what we're talking about, because mm. even with you and your experience and training, we're still talking about um, 
beings on, on higher realms of earth mm. not even, and it's it's dr king's level of training and experience and, and as an avatar that he's making contact with extraterrestrials from other planets yeah and, in the I, and I will say actually and i was talking to brian kniep about that very recently this and he had a lot of experience in the latter days mm. of dr king getting mental transmissions which weren't somatic trance oh yeah yeah this is a good point this but he, point. He, yeah. he was then getting what you might call dictation yeah and he was always very careful and he always every time he got it scanned just to because he did checked by them checked by them mm. and you, you people will have heard that probably when they've heard these mm. and you want to can i play back the tape and and I've, i don't know of a case myself but that they've ever come back and said, no, you got this wrong or that wrong. Mm. But I don't <laughs> yeah. know of one, but, yeah. uh, you know, but there again, he did it. He was wary himself of the condition mm. and he got it checked. But I know also that some communicators, and he's told me this and he's definitely told Brian this, were easier for him than others. So in other words, he had more affinity with certain cosmic intelligences oh, really? than he had with, say, a, 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 you know, I don't want to particularly name anyone, sure, but sure. a communicator that wasn't a regular communicator, I perhaps see. wasn't so, someone, an intelligence he personally knew so well, mm. would be more difficult for him and slower a bit mm -hmm. than someone he was regular in touch with, like, for example, there's one called Adept Number 5 mm -hmm. that was a, someone he knew very, very well and had a very wonderful relationship with and he could very quickly get so mm -hmm. even at that level but yeah. he could still do it right right but right. it it's all about rapport it's That's a skill true. it's a science it's not a sales yeah <laughs> i like that yeah um the i think it also it just goes to show in general as well that um, okay, we talked about the, him, that yardstick that he's provided there and the training and the experience and the fact that he wasn't just a contactee, he was a spiritual master, mm -hmm. able to do that. I can't think of one other contactee I don't know that one. I know of who, no. who would claim to be a spiritual master. Because there master. is a thing, you know, most of, and, and it's not just about mediumship, it's when we get into psychics, I want to talk about this yeah. a fair amount because it's so relevant. Mm. Most of the traditional yoga schools frowned upon psychic development. Mm. They were there to gain enlightenment, ultimately samadhi, and from their point of view, ultimately nirvana. Yeah. They knew the psychic things would happen. They didn't necessarily use that word, sure. but people would see the lights in the center. They would yeah. hear certain sounds, like the sound yeah. of a conch shell, yeah. or different things that would come along, even have experiences of dakinis, entities, etc. Yeah. But you were basically meant to detach from those when they came, get back to what you're there for, and focus on your own inner enlightenment. And there was, that was their goal. In this age of service, it's all changed. So in the yoga schools, you don't get psychic development training, if you see what I mean. Yes. It's acknowledged as a fact, but yes. it's not what you're there to do. You're just moving through it, really. In the psychic yeah. development world, you don't get yoga, advanced yoga training. <laughs> yeah. The ethereal society may be unique. I may be it ah, isn't, and but bring them together. we bring them together. <clears throat> and you need both. You mm. absolutely need both. Because without the yoga, what I'm calling the yoga training, in one form or another, particularly concentration, yeah. and particularly through, I mean, actually prayer, karma yoga, by the way, service, is a great way of developing good concentration. Mm. I attribute, you know, my channeling abilities for what it's worth, largely due to, you know, four decades of intensive daily karma yoga it's a good message for people. Uh, I mean, a lot of it yeah. under the direct training and, and involvement of, of, a, of a master of yoga. Yeah. But even without that, and the, you know that you don't need that to really enhance your concentration. If you're if you're doing good karma yoga, sure. You know, it could be anything from, you know, cleaning to cooking to writing. It almost doesn't matter what it is or a technical skill you still have to concentrate upon it to do it mm. well. And that's training your concentration. So that's a key factor. And then add into that the practices, the yes. spiritual practices, including prayer, including mantra, including breathing. That's where you're getting the sensitization. Yes. It's probably the word I'm looking for, actually. Mm, mm, mm. And you're elevating yourself. Bring the two together. Now, on top of those things, though, if you wanted to become 
a psychic or you wanted to go in the direction of channeling, which I am not recommending, by sure. the way, it's not necessary at all. Healing's a great thing, for example. Prayer's an even greater thing. But if you did, you'd also have to spend, I would say, certainly hundreds. I mean, in my case, it's been thousands of hours developing those specific psychic abilities. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't do that, and they don't yeah. need to. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But I have chosen to do that. It is strange that, you know, we would consider, you know, to be a great musician, to be a great athlete, to be all these things, you would obviously recognise that tens of thousands yeah. of hours need to be invested in doing that. Yeah. And yet somehow when it comes to psychic things, yeah. because people just don't believe it, just think, oh, well, you could just, you yeah. know. And they did that with prayer. Mm. You know, the people would think, well, as long as I say the, the, you know, the nunc dimittis or, you know, whatever the prayer yeah. was, yeah. you know, I can, I can be thinking about fish and chips and the laundry, but I'm saying these words... I've prayed, right? And right, they literally right. were doing that. Yeah. It was just a ver verbal thing, yeah. um, and it has no power. Mm. Dr. King revolutionised prayer completely. Sure, no one yeah. else I know of has, has, has defined and taught prayer in the way he did. Yeah, and he's revolutionised mediumship. He's taken it to a completely different level, and he did it right at the moment when tape recorders were coming into being. Yeah, and so it could be recorded. Yeah, so you have there a body of work. You don't have to guess. You can, even, you can listen to it as it was given. Mm. You can't sort of, perhaps he could put all this together and concoct it. He was sitting there with other people present and, and delivering the nine freedoms. He didn't have any notes. Yeah. And he was and coming up with some of the greatest wisdom anyone's ever heard. Whereas even with a, someone like a Blavatsky, and she wouldn't compare and doesn't compare herself to the nine freedoms, she's a massive fan, a great exponent, and a practitioner of the Nine Freedoms, I believe, herself, she, there's a lot of mystery around how she came up with the secret doctrine and mm. what she did. She did it in her, her room, on her own, and, you know, there's different things happen, but we don't know. But here, you have somebody sitting down, delivering the Twelve Blessings. Now, the Twelve Blessings, we're told, this is an interesting one, I think, was delivered 52 years earlier mm. than it was meant to be, or I think it was the Twelve Blessings on Mountains. The question then arises, how would it have been delivered in 2010, which it would have been? And in my opinion, looking at the world as it is and the people available on the world as it is, I don't think it would have been delivered anywhere near the way it was delivered through Dr King. You see, yeah. I don't think it would have been coming to our two points nearly as accurate as it is. And I think it would have been delivered, this is my opinion only, through the realms, like the book of Revelation. I don't mm -hmm. know whether you know, but it's said to have been delivered by Jesus to an angel, to St. John. I see. Because that angel would be capable of a rapport, so-called angel, with, right. Saint, with, with, with Jesus. That Whereas St. John, be... clearly, the implication to me, as mm. a somebody who channels, is that he couldn't have got it directly. Direct. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. it might have been delivered, I'm going to throw out a name here, to Francis Bacon. Mm. I only say his name because a lot of it's in 17th century English. And he was the person, or one of the people, but not only behind Shakespeare, but behind the, new, the um, King James Bible. Those two are the most read works in English writing, by the mm. way, between them. And... It might, let's just say it was delivered to him, he would have had to then deliver it to someone who could channel Francis Bacon. Right. By the time you, and that would be dictated. And you'd have a much less aversion. Never mind the fact that without Dr. King pre present, it wouldn't have become a practice. Yeah. So you wouldn't have heard the voice, you wouldn't have had the accuracy. And it wouldn't be a practice in the form it now is without Dr. King, because nobody would have thought of doing that to it or had the ability to devise this way of performing it. Yeah, and I think both of those examples you gave, the Book of Revelation and this hypothetical one about mm. the Twelve Blessings, mm. um, you know, just points again to how difficult it is to actually establish rapport with an extraterrestrial and receive a contact from them, a channel message from mm. them. Yeah. Um, whereas I think people are make, almost like making out that this is, some, is, is almost like an easy thing to do, where even if they're not making out as an easy thing to do, they are making that claim without... Well, some of them do. Yeah. No, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, yeah. but some of them say it's easy. It's like mm. Falling off a log. Mm. Yeah, I've yeah. definitely seen yeah. examples of that, and it's yeah, it's it's very poor, and we can talk about some of the reasons why that's a danger. Yeah. As well, I, I say it's not like falling off a log; it's advanced forestry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I remember that last time. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know even the people who who claim 
who don't claim necessarily that it's easy, but claim to be in contact. I mean, there's still a lot of questions about their training, the level of initiation they receive, the way that they develop their life, you know, whether it's been, you know, in the the example you gave of karma yoga over decades and how that prepares you in terms of concentration. And so, you know, these are all, I think, elements that people can use as yardsticks to determine whether that person may really even be in a position Mm. to be able to receive that contact. I quite agree. And I think that brings us to the second part, which you alluded to much earlier in the show, which is if they are even in touch with the being they claim to be in touch with in the first place, Mm. which, um, you know, there's there's going back to the master theorists. I know that another one of the the quotes that he gave was that he was saying that a lot of people who who believe that they're in contact with extraterrestrials are in fact in contact with discarnate entities. Absolutely. It's very dangerous, extremely dangerous. And they're having fun. It's, it, it's their idea of fun, these discarnate entities, mm. I mean. They're pretending. And they might get off on it on an ego basis. Yeah. And they might, you know, they, they could uh, also want to cause confusion and damage people like us, people who, Dr. George King, who has a genuine contact, if there's a total melee of confusion out Absolutely. there, and they love confusion, yeah. then people just lump him in with everybody else, and he's exactly. not... And, and, I think everybody who claims to be a medium should tell us their track record mm. and why we should believe them and what training they had. That would be one thing. What sort of life they have led. Um, doesn't mean they've got to have been led a perfect life. I mean, I, for one, definitely have not. Mm. But there's got to be some indication of dedicated spiritual training through the decades, in most yeah. cases, I would say, yeah. and regular and consistent. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I don't want to be dogmatic there. There could be yeah. exceptions. But if you're looking for real accuracy, that's what you really would like to see. Yeah. And then, of course, it's the quality and the caliber of the content yeah. as well. So yeah. those two things. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a really good um, affirmation there, what to pay attention to. And I think just coming back to some of the dangers, I mean, um, as you say, if you've got this whole melee of confusion, I mean, basically, it's... It's, it's quite it's, deliberate. It's quite and deliberate. quite deliberate. It's taking people away from genuine contacts and teachings which can help with the ultimate cause of peace and enlightenment on Earth. Yeah. And so that's, that's already a, a problem there, misleading people with false teachings. I mean, you could be deluding yourself with false ideas, you know, as someone who claims to be a channel, and that's mm. not only bad for yourself, but anyone else that therefore you impact with that false teaching. Um, and, and, but I think the most important one is devaluing real context, devaluing real teachings like yeah. the Nine Freedoms. Yeah, and yeah. They, they, they set out to do it. I mean, mm. there are some extremely dodgy cults out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to name any of them, but I can think of one in particular, uh, which is gives a tremendously bad reputation to religious, new religious organizations. And this Mm. is meant to impact on another organization like the Ethereum Society, which is not a cult at all, Mm. completely open organization. And and yet it's, it's, you know, people who are lazy. Yeah, Yeah, they they just tar it with the same brush. And in the same way, oh, well, I had a message. They'll even say, we've even had people who say they've had a message from some of our communicators, like the Master Ethereus or Mars Sector oh, really? Six or, or Dr. King himself. Wow. And okay. of course, that, you can rule that out quickly because they yes. made it clear that he won't be replaced yes. as primary terrestrial mental channel. Yeah. So I think if they, I'm not going to say no one could ever do that, but if they did do that, they'd be directed very carefully not to claim it. Yes, if it was a genuine contact. Yes, yes. the fact they claim yeah. it. Almost rules. proves that yeah. they've got a genuine yeah. content. Yeah, yeah I totally get it. Well, I think um, just just kind of like brings us to a close here. I think that you know, the, I think the great examples that you gave in terms of the things that people can look to in terms of the credentials and sort of yardsticks that anyone you know can evaluate any you communicate with. I think one of the most interesting for me is that you know if they claim in contact with anyone from outside the solar system, very unlikely to be true. Yeah. If there's someone who has not had decade, you know at least the training that Dr. King has had, very unlikely to be in contact with elevated um, beings yeah. from other worlds. Um, and you know, more likely to be in contact with a discounted entity or someone pretending to be somebody else yeah. or even deluding themselves. Or their themselves. own imagination, which or, is a yeah. mental health condition. Right. And they need help. That's right. Such people. And, well, it, and there is a big warning there. Yeah, and the last thing that those people should be doing is offer, uh, purporting to be offering spiritual teaching, which is totally bogus and nonsense. Absolutely. And taking away from absolutely genuine, profound and important messages that we have been given by beings like Mars Sector 6. Very well put. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. (laughs) 
Everybody, it's Darren here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Rich and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, on your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.